All right, welcome to the September 17th, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python user group meeting. Um, it might become the Akapai user group meeting after this one, depending on what happens tomorrow at the Open uh, Open Wallet Foundation TAC meeting, but we'll see how that goes. So we'll talk about that first. Um, issues in PR, particularly the issue around um, DIDs and um, where how the DID management should go. Um, reminder that this is the uh, this meeting is being recorded, and I'll post the recording right after the call. Uh, this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation, except it's not a Hyperledger Foundation anymore because as of uh, Monday, this is a Linux Foundation decentralized trust meeting. And the same code of conduct is in effect, and the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is still in effect, but we do have to update this and uh, make those other changes, so I'll get on to that. Um, welcome all. Um, I don't know if anyone has any introductions they would like to make or any announcements or agenda requests, so um, open mic right now for anyone that wants to do any of those things. All right. Um, okay, on the agenda, we'll start with the Open Wallet Foundation stuff because that's been my focus a lot over the last couple of days. So um, as everyone I think knows, we have um, applied for Akapai to be created as a project at the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, there is a TAC meeting tomorrow. Um, at 7 a.m. This is the time of the normal Aries working group call, but I will certainly be on the um, Open Wallet Foundation TAC meeting. Um, Zoom link is is here in the notes, so anyone who wants to join as well and, and show support for this transition, um, please do so. Um, there are PRs into the uh, various... Um, to the project proposals meeting. So um, one for Akapai. And so that's what you see here with the comments that we've received. Um, and um, so that's what will be discussed tomorrow. I'll um, also prepare a bit of an overview presentation to take up a, a few moments of the meeting. Um, there's also um, proposals for PRs for Asgar, for Asian Test Harness and for Mediator. So those are all in there. There's also a issue that's been created for creating a um, wallet interoperability special interest group. So all of those are in process. Um, how many we get to tomorrow versus the next TAC meeting, I'm not sure, but we'll see how that goes. Um, the biggest issue, uh, the the thing that I got caught off guard on of of and um, should have should have better thought out better last week and as we prepared the uh, documents was um, I put in where we wanted um, the projects to be slotted as far as the maturity level so um, open wallet uh, similar to Hyperledger which has um, incubation and uh, graduate projects um, Open Wallet has labs, growth projects, and impact projects. So far, they don't have any impact projects. They only and and only Credo and Bifold are growth projects. We would like Akapai to go in as an impact project, and um, for that, we need um, maturity level information. And so, I've been um, madly putting together and contacting folks. Um, to do that. And so um, this is the document we have right now. Um, so this is it's the same document where we had the PRs um, content. And so at the top of that now, we've got the maturity levels. And as I understand it, um, there should be a growth and a impact for those that we want to be an impact project and um, just the growth for the uh, for those that we just want to be a growth project. So there's bullet points, and this is what I should have included before as far as um, uh, justifying the, the proposed maturity level. 
So for Akapai, the big thing we need is um, anyone who is able to, to put in a, um, uh, their name as, as to having done a proof of concept or pilot. And then for an impact, anyone who is willing to um, put their name forward to be a governing member of a, uh, a governance um, board for the project. So we actually have four, which is more than enough, um, but obviously love to see more. So if anyone else, um, any other organization wants to add their name, we'd be delighted with that. Um, then there's the evidence of um, the healthy project. Um, the other one that we could use names on, um, so unlike the growth here, we want production implementations. And so we've got three here, um, Didx, uh, where Moritz uh, works, is another that have agreed to put their name in here. Um, if anyone has any other names of um, production implementations or people willing to put their name uh, that have production implementations, that would be awesome. Um, we, I probably, will, I'm going to try to get a an adopters.md file put into the repository by tomorrow that um, uh, has a list of project adopters. And so that uh, that would be helpful as well. I'll I'll presumably put these names in there already. Um, does anyone have any uh, suggestions, um, anyone willing to put their name here or um, able to contact anyone um, to put them in? Patrick? Uh, yeah, I'd be willing to put my name in some, some of them that apply. Obviously, anything production, like I, I don't really have anything. I'm yeah. mostly doing some development work, but I do have, you know, Fair yep. level of experience, uh, so um, like that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so awesome. I, I can have a look and see which one uh, that that sort of fits. Yeah, this is the um, proof of concepts and pilots. Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome, Sebastian. Yeah. So yeah. many of you know Northern Block. We awesome. have uh, the the mining the mining stuff in production, and so excellent. Many, you can put our name in pretty much all the categories. Excellent. Are you willing to be uh, on the governing board? <laughs> uh, let me let me check that out. Okay, not Just crucial. Check. I mean, you know the level the the. the Practical governance won't change, and so it will be a light lift unless something radical happens. Um, you know, it really is something gets raised above the um, uh, uh, above the maintainers level, and um, we do have fantastic maintainers that keep yeah. things going pretty nicely. So um, that's there. By the way. Um, Didex in and Moritz is willing to be a maintainer as well, which is delightful. Um, I think that's long overdue. I think um, the other uh, maintainers would agree. And so we will be likely um, proposing that Moritz be added as a maintainer in the near future. Two thumbs up on that one. Yeah, he's done a great job, including the one he put in yesterday. Thank you, Sebastian. That's awesome. That that should get us there. And again, if you want to put your name here, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. Um, but um, having your name in here is very helpful. So much appreciated. I'll put links into the various organizations here. Um, okay. Um, feel free to go through these. Oh, um, ask our... I'd like, I'm proposing ASCAR go in as uh, maturity um, level impact. So uh, same thing for ASCAR. So um, if, if, uh, if those, if I could get a thumbs up on any that we can add in for ASCAR, it'd be good. I, I think it's mature enough. Um, 
Indicio, um, I didn't ask here, um, and I I should have. So Daniel, maybe you want to check on that, or Shar check on that, and maybe I should remove this. We do need two, so um, would appreciate help there. Um, but Asgar is is you know well used and and um, complete feature complete, so. Uh, and and certainly used in production in a number of places. Um, so I'll also have to fill it out here. The, um, agent test harness will be a, a maturity level of um, of growth proposed and mediator growth as well. And so um, I know we have a ton of implementations here. So. All of these, um, Sebastian. Yeah, I, I are you able to share the uh, the link of this in chat? Yeah, yeah, will do. See if I can see it. Shell. I read I read something about uh, needing a uh, roadmap for uh, the maturity yes. level growth. Is that is that right? Because yeah, if so, right I have sort of a rough I have sort of a rough uh, like three quarter roadmap if that if that helps any just that would right there. yeah if you could um okay. put that in there I think, that'd be great okay perfect yes yes so you've got the I'm just putting the link into chat right now Um, so really appreciate um, contributions there. Likewise for mediator service. Is Acrida part of the test harness? Or is it... Yes. Um, so Acrida would go into here. Um, so the, the proposal that's gone in says that um, agent test harness, mobile wallet test harness, and Acrida would go together as a agent test suite or something like that Have, didn't quite nail down the name um, shell if you have a name we can use that would be appreciated but it would be the three repositories going together they would remain separate repositories but would be governed if you will and 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 um talked about as a single project So, so all of those repos would be considered growth. Yes, and would need roadmaps for three of those. Okay, no. So it's a roadmap for the project. Okay. Um, okay. So I'll cover that in the overview um, when I talk about this. Um, that. You know, the three projects have different elements. They're separate repositories. We don't want to bring them into a mono repo or anything like that. There's no need for that. But we do want to um, treat them as a wallet test capability. Okay. Uh, Stephen, I'm I'm fine if you want to add my uh, northern block or my name to the governing thing that you asked. All right, for. awesome. Thank you. That's great. And that gets us five organizations, which is what I was aiming for. So that's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that covers most of it. Any other comments from anyone? As I say, feel free to show up tomorrow um, at the meeting. Again, the Zoom link is right here in the notes, but I can paste that in to chat. That's in chat now.
Um, okay, additional information requested. I've got that and list of supporters. So I've got that as well. So that's great. Um, so what I will be doing today is um, taking that information, filling out the rest of it, because as you saw, the um, the, the test harness and the mediator did not have a lot in it. So I've got to finish those out. Then I'll be updating the PRs um, for each of the projects to put those in. And I'll be preparing a, a brief summary overview of, um, of, of the information presented, uh, of the information we're um, proposing to go into open wallet as a, uh, individually and as a as a related set of of things, also justifying why they're going in as independent, if you will. Okay. Any other last comments there before we jump to PRs? Okay. Um, I think. Which was the one we wanted to talk about? Um, the did key, that one. So we've had a, a bit of a discussion in here. Um, Patrick, do you want to go over a bit and where and and have we landed, or do we need to have a discussion about the 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 concerns? Uh, probably a, a little discussion. Okay. Um, so we just to put some context. So we had discussions in the last uh, few meetings about changing the way that uh, DIDs are registered in Akapai and sort of moving away from the one endpoint to register all any kind of DID methods to having separate DID method registrations. Uh, so this one was just the first proposal. Uh, based on did key, the probably the most simple did method that currently exists uh, in Akapai because you know it's sort of a self-contained did. You generate your key pair, put the public key in the did, and then that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, so I added initially a route just to create a, a, a did and a key pair, very similar to the way it was currently doing it. Uh, later on, I've added a functionality to bind a verification method to that did. Uh, since the did itself would nev will never change, you know, you will always just have one key. Yeah. You can, yeah. for example, bind a did web verification method to that did. So then Akapai will be able to sign credential using either the did key or the did web with that binded verification method. Uh, of course, it's the user's responsibility to make sure that this the multi-key of this did key is into their did document. So this is a method that, you know, lets a user just say, hey, I have a, a, a did web, I have this verification method ID, and I'd like to use this key pair with it. Okay. Um, so that's where it's at now. For the structure, so there was a existing did directory in Akapai. It was currently only containing a did key.py file that was used for resolving dids. Um, so it seemed to me like that directory would be the natural place to take on this work, especially since there was not much in there, only one did, that, did key.py. Uh, the concern we're sort of having right now is that, well, first of all, so this, uh, did key.py is used by um, a few other modules for resolving did key. I'm not too sure why I did not have a full on uh, review on this. So what I've done is in this class, I've had it a create and a bind method. So create, create a new key, and then there's a bind, which you have an already existing key and it will add another I haven't read the uh, Daniel Bloom's. I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm happy to. I don't want to distract you. Keep going. No, that's fine. And I'm happy to uh, know more about how uh, we could do this better. So the key binding was not actually on did. It was made on uh, keys. Uh, so in Akapai, you can either create a, a did or you can create a, a key or a signing key. Um, yeah. So. 
questions that remain is, uh, do we want to create subdirectories in the did folder for each method, like create a key subdirectory, a web, trusted web, peer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. And what do we do with the current state, like this current did key.py file uh, in the long term? Do we want to move it somewhere else? I'm not I'm not sure why why it's there. Like I, I thought I could probably had uh, like uni resolver capabilities enabled. So um not entirely sure why what this is used for. Oh, so uh, to answer the very last question you brought up there, uh, real fast. Uh so the did key stuff is used in a in a few places where we are strictly expecting a did key and not any arbitrary did method. Um and then it is also in turn used by uh the the resolver interface for resolving did key. So it the resolver depends on the did key class. Um and then it's also used like independently, I think in like out of band message handling and maybe in the mediation handling as well. There's some um, not hard coded, I would say, but stronger expectations about uh, did key being used in in some of those cases. Right. Um, okay. To to comment a little bit further, I feel a little bad for having so many comments on this PR because ultimately it is pretty simple to to add did key stuff. So I, I apologize. Um, I'm finding that I have a few more opinions than I expected on some of these concepts. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I'm in support of the idea in general. I just want to help try to make sure that it's the right thing. And we, we've established a good pattern for ourselves for uh, other did methods going forward. Um, so yeah, hopefully I don't come across as giving you a hard time. But um, <laughs> so the the main thing that I, I currently have mixed feelings about, um, you know, code style questions aside, is the, the concept of the binding um, uh -huh. Your explanation that you just gave, um, I feel a little less like it's a hack than I, I did last night when I was reading through this. Um, but I still have the question of why why would we have the interme intermediate step of representing it as, as a did key? Why would we choose to sign a value <laughs> using the did key as opposed to, say, the original did itself or a verification method ID, um, so if that makes sense? Yeah, I've got an answer for that. So when you think about did, like a, a did web, for example, it doesn't really mean anything to Akapai, right? So if I register a did web, it's going to have a key pair, but really you need a verification method within that did. Uh, the thing with did key is it's a one-to-one -one mapping to a key pair. So I, I actually think it's the perfect uh, use case for binding a verification method to that did key. Uh, and, and the way I coded it, if there's no, if the user doesn't provide a verification method, it is just, you know, generate the normal sort of did key verification method where you just add, you know, you, you shard the, the multi-key again. So because a, if you think about a verification method, let's say I have a multi-key, uh, it, it's the, you know, it's, it's the same representation, um, I could very well sign a document with this did key or the did web that contains that verification method uh, in Occupy uh, using the options field mm -hmm. of uh, you know any of the endpoints. Um, so that was my uh, impression because um, binding a verification method to a did web for me, uh, this is kind of hacky, right? Because the the current way that Occupy does did web, it's you know, it's not really did web. You're just putting the a did web as an alias for a key, uh, where really it's a verification method that should be there. So by binding a verification method to a did key, you can effectively use the did or the verification make, uh, method independently, and both will be, uh, Akapai will be able to uh, know what to do with them. So I think the, the, the key point that I, um, I think we might diverge in our thinking a little bit is on, you said Akapai doesn't really understand the concept of a did web. And so this did key mechanism and binding keys to the did web is a way for us to get around that point. Um, 
I think my my general notion is that it would be better for us to give Akapai a better way of of referencing uh, or of handling did web in general, but more generally did dids and having verification methods a and like this, this feels like it would take us in a direction where we still have kind of this piecemeal support for dids and did documents and, and our reckoning of those things inside of Akapai. And, and I'm not yeah. sure if, if it's good enough or if we should try for, for something um, that's a little bit more complete, if that makes sense. So um, further to that, so with this here, uh, this means that the current way that we do did web could change entirely. You know, like I, because uh, the way it's now, like you, you it's still managed outside. Uh, I'm looking forward to changing the way Akapai does did web and fully support did web through a plugin. I, I had a look at the plugin you made and I think that's a, a good idea, but we, I do still want to enable someone to manage their, their document outside of Akapai and just create a mapping with a verification method. I think that's a very, um, that's just a very useful feature to have uh, because not everyone using did web will want to use the Akapai did web plugin. You know, they might have a, a remote server that Akapai is not aware of uh, and just having the option to quickly bind a verification method to a did key in an Akapai agent that does have a lot of use case in my my opinion. Do we provide the right facilities to enable somebody to manage a did document outside of Akapai? That like is the key material known? Like it it just feels we're putting a lot of responsibility on the controller to be aware of state that's internal to Akapai. Mm -hmm. Um and and it seems like we could get very easily to a state where we're out of sync. And it, I think it would be better for, for Akapai to be more involved in some of these processes. Not all of them. I think it still makes sense for us to give, you know, quote unquote power users the ability to do what they want if they have a deep understanding of how Akapai represents the internal state of all these keys and all that stuff. Um, but I, I'm not sure if we're to that point yet. Yeah, um, I don't know. I I love to just disagree on on that part. Like I and like I mentioned, this is for did key specifically, right? Like, um, did key has a native verification method when you use a did key, right? Like if I can uh, fully resolve that verification method. In this case, we're just providing it an additional verification method so that users can access this key pair um, using another like a did web or something like that. Uh, what this gonna enable to do is if a user wants to do that, they can use a did key to you know, generate a key that they wanna use in a did web document and the Akapai quote unquote did web method can then fully move into a more streamlined approach for people that wanna have a managed uh, did web solution. So, so are you saying Patrick that, that the controller ought to know about a key and a in its identifier, and then yes, Akapai, the... Akapai can act based on the identifier. Um, how to yes. represent it as it did. So I'm I'm a controller. I have an empty did document. I want to create a key. Uh, I know what's my did right. I know the address of the did web, and I know that. I want to call a key that's going to be like key one. So yeah. I send that to, I create a did key in Akapai. I say, I want you to recognize this as key one. It's going to return me its public key. And I just go put that in my did document. That's hosted. But there. but as a as a web. So you're so you're identifying keys and you're you're managing private keys, but then you're telling Akapai, oh, by the way, um, this should be part of this did. Yeah, or use this key pair when yeah. I want to sign something. Exactly, that's what I mean. Verification method. Yeah. Hmm. And then, and then with that knowledge, Akapai can generate did docs of the right of whatever use of whatever type it knows about this key pair. 
is going to be generated into a did web document. This this one is going to be represented as a did key. This one is going to be represented as a did TDW. And they all could actually be the same private key and just published um, in three different ways. Yeah, so for did web, did TDW, uh, I think ICAPI could have a bit more support, um, you know, have a plugin that ICAPI is going to be aware of the did documents. I'm not too sure how that can be done. Uh, but even currently, the way I use did web is I just create a did web in ICAPI and I host the did document. The current limitations right now is that I'm only limited to one key pair per did web. Uh, with using did key and binding a verification method, I could create four different did keys uh, and have them with different verification method belonging to the same did web. So exactly, did exactly. That key one, key two, key three. Uh, and this sort of binding enables this. Uh, right now we only have ED25519, but you know, we could look at ECD, uh, yeah. let's just say eventually, um, BBS, et cetera. Yep. So the, this method of binding a verification method to a did key is a, uh, user like controller dependent solution. It takes care of this. And then for did web, like the did web method we're going to look at, we can forget about this user dependent methodology and focus on a more streamlined experience uh, through a plugin. Because if a user wants to host its own did document and manage its own did document, it can already do that with binding a verification method to a did key. So this concept of the controller knowing about a key and mm -hmm. binding it to a did. Yeah. And even the potential of knowing about two keys and saying, oh, here's two keys. And by the way, I want to bind them to two different, uh, so, sorry, to the same did. And therefore I get two verification methods. Um, that becomes possible. So the controller's model is a private key. Uh, I mean, or, or sorry, a key pair. And then the did that it is bound to. And then Akapai worries about what is that, how does that binding affect what I generate as a did doc and publish? Is that? In, in my example, the, the, the only thing it changed for Akapai is, is uh, how can I sign this document using this verification method? Like yeah, how do okay. I make sure that I sign the document in a way it can verify? And this also enables things like, you know, if I have three controllers of the same entity, you know, sharing the same did doc, but each controller is meant to sign like one specific key pair, like I'm yeah. okay, this controller does key one, this controller key two. So uh, I just think this enables interesting uh, scenarios. Um, but I think that binding is, sorry, the binding is the identifier that the controller says this key is, here's the, here's the yep. key pair. And here's the identifier I want to use for it. That identifier happens to be a did identifier. So mm -hmm. a did plus a hash key one. Yeah. Um, and he can, he can either, yeah. and then like, he can be, you know, we can either do uh, optional seed support in there. So if the agent knows the key pair, he can generate it, or he can also use that just to generate a new key pair that he's going to mm -hmm. put in his did document also. And then the weirdness for did key is the did you're binding it to is derived from the 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 key the the public key itself. Yeah, it's it's like a, Whereas, a specific encoding. Yeah. Right. Whereas for a did web, you're just saying did web, here's the location yeah. hashtag key one. Yeah. And then all of the um logic to create the did doc, publish the did, update the did doc because oh, we just added another key to that did doc. All of that would be taken care of by Akapai. I am the absolute wrong person to be talking about this, but that made sense to me, <laughs> but I am not the right one to 
say that's what we should do. So um, I'm just wondering what others are thinking about that, Daniel and Jamie in particular. I, yeah, uh, let's see. I think my hangup is that we're using did key as uh, as a representation for a key um, in a context where we're actually assigning the the key to a did that isn't a did key. Um, yeah, just the the mixture of of did key when our ultimate goal is for it to be associated with like a did web or a did tdw or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really weird. that's just agreed totally agreed that's the representation of right the the instantiation of the key pair that's how right. we instantiate the key pair and convey it is that so i think the <clears throat> it's a very minor difference I fully acknowledge that but yeah. i think i would be a little like this would I would be less hung up on this, I guess, if we were just using like a multi-key representation of yeah. of the key pair as opposed to a that makes key sense to me. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but me too. Me too. Trust me. Me too. Uh, like I think switching to multi-key is just has a lot of benefits. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, binding to ver key right now in Icapi. Um and I was just like, I'm reading your other question here about the profile.keys. Um, you do need to create a key because the, the did doesn't have that, um, the tags attached to it that are required for uh, binding a verification method. That's only on the keys and the signing key that this is enabled. So if I didn't create a key, uh, I didn't have, um, I, I wouldn't be able to tag this verification method. So maybe what we want to do is forget about dids and move more towards a key management in Akapai. Yeah, uh, in, in the controller, in the controller. I think the controller yeah. wants to use keys because it signs things and it says, oh, I want to use this key. Am I right? Yeah, and it, 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 it instructs this by providing a verification method. It, it instructions us by saying, here's a multi-key and here's the identifier I want it bound to, I want to use for it. And that identifier Im implies a did and a, and a, and a reference uh, to a verification method in a did. So let's say I want to issue a credential. I provide the, un or issue that I provide a JSON that's that of the data I want to sign. Right, there can be anything mm -hmm. in the station. It's just a JSON document, and then I provide uh, options of to instruct Ekapi how to sign this. Right, this is how it works in Didcom v1. It's how it works in the VC API endpoints. You you provide two properties to an endpoint. One, the data I want to sign can be a verifiable credential, can be yeah. anything, and then a set of options that are there to ideally all these options should be optional, and Ekapi should be able to sign it without any options, you know, with default values, but these options gonna instruct like which crypto suit you wanna use, which key you wanna use. Um, and the idea that we wanna use a verification method to tell Akapai which key pair to go get is because I, I would like to keep these options as similar to uh, proof options that we see in W3C specifications. Right, which say like which crypto suit you want to use, the verification yeah. method you want to use, and if we just have a key pair uh, that is has the like its main ID, it's its multi key, right? It's public multi key, mm -hmm. but has associated verification method. You know, then the controller can just say, well, this is the verification method I want to use. I already know which is the multi key responsible for it, but I'm just going to provide you the verification method, and I I will know which key to go get based on this. And and to change your word slightly, um, you're gonna, the controller is gonna say, here's the identifier of the key I wanna use. That key, that identifier of the key is a did, uh, a reference inside a did, which is essentially to a verification mm -hmm. method. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And, but 
But before that, Akapai would, the controller would register that I am in the future, I am going to use this key. Yeah. Associated so they're, they're with this did that with this doc did, with this identifier. Here's the key, the multi key. Here's the multi key, and here's the identifier for it. Go take care yeah. of making sure that key exists. Yeah, I, that's I think more or less ADLE, what we're going to do. EDLE would even want to be able to provide multiple identifier for a key, but I think one for now is fine. Um, I, I I was thinking about that. I don't. I, I mean, it's it's kind of a weird exception that a did key can be used in did web. So I don't think it needs multiple identifiers. You just do it multiple yeah. times if you want to. Yeah. I don't think we need to make that it, it, to Akapai. They're just different keys with different identifiers. Hmm. But that becomes is that the right model? And then Akapai would say, "Oh, we don't." have this key so i need to go publish it or oh that key exists but it doesn't have this verification method so i have to go update the did doc and so on oh this is a did key and you're trying to add a second verification method to it that's not allowed <laughs> um or that you know that's the type of thing that would happen is that sounding right for, daniel for daniel came like... off mute hang on patrick daniel yeah. came off mute so um so I think where we're talking right now is is like one layer down. It's a it's a primitive that enables us to use dids and verification method IDs for signing, but doesn't necessarily feed into did doc construction and, and creation. Like that that would be like one layer up from creating key and then binding it uh, to a, a specific did, and then like something else would would worry about that part is, is oh, how I'm uh, currently conceptualizing it, at least. What I'm thinking of is um, this is the way you convey to Akapai, the controller. I, I'm thinking of the controller interface. The controller would first register that it knows about a private key and then use it to sign things and so on. So it could say, here's, here's a multi-key and I want it associated with a did indie. Right. Go. And right. here's a here's a and and whatever identifier it needs to, it it does. And it might even get back an identifier. Here's the did method I'm using, and it gets back an identifier. That maybe yeah. that's the right model. And then well, from then that's... on, it can use that, it can use that identifier to use that key essentially. That's how it uses the key. And the controller keeps track of which keys it knows about. Right. So there's there's a period of time after key creation. If we're if we're giving the controller the, the ability to manually construct a DIT document by you know constructing no. keys and stuff, there's a period of time after key creation and before binding the key to a DID where we have an intermediate identifier. Um, I think what Patrick has in the PR currently is the intermediate identifier is a DID key. Um, and we discussed having that changed to be the multi-key representation. I think yeah. ultimately the exact identifier used is is somewhat irrelevant. Um, we could use a hash of the key. We could use a thumbprint. We could do whatever. Um, as long as it's just the identifier that the wallet knows is associated with that key pair. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the step following where we bind it to a did, that's when that key is now addressable by the verification method ID. Um, and then all operations from that point forward that use keys should either use uh, the did itself and then have a default strategy for selecting a verification method ID associated mm -hmm. with that did right. or the verification method ID specifically. Um, and then I, that should yeah. directly resolve to the key pair. Yeah. One, one thing you said in there that I wanted to question, you said that the controller is creating the did doc. And what I'm think I'm proposing is saying the controller doesn't know anything about a did doc. All it knows is it has a bunch of identifiers for keys that it can use. It's, it creates them and it, and it uses that identifier. It doesn't actually know that, oh, that's a did doc identifier. It just knows it has an identifier for it. And so the controller isn't involved in creating the did doc or structuring it or so on. It's, its role is to know about the private keys it has and the and the identifiers for them. I think there's like two different paths. So there's mm -hmm. there's the controller has to worry about as little as possible path, 
Yeah. And then yeah. the controller is is intimately involved in in the creation of the DIT document. So it can be and, done according to whatever requirements there are in that particular context. And my and, goal is that it be as little as possible. <laughs> All right. And and Patrick is is really um really pushing for having the flexibility to to manually do it as well. Um so I think in in the manual creation mm -hmm. case, we need to have the ability to manually create keys. Okay. In the controller knows as little as possible case, I think the controller should just create a did with the feature flags I've talked a lot about now at this point. Yeah. And then the did becomes the identifier that the controller uses to um, you know, do You're issuance, right. do do whatever, um, rather than a specific verification method ID, because the default selection strategy for uh, taking a did and then going to the verification method ID is good enough for them. They don't so, they don't care about the exact verification methods that are signing the credentials. It's just the the keys that were created when I created this did and put into the assertion method, you know, verification relationship. Yeah. And that's good enough kind of a thing. So so the only thing I see there is that that means that we have a correspondence of a single did to a single key and so, so not think... necessarily i would say so okay. if we have if we have the feature flag okay. methodology we can say for you know for did ah, i'm gonna add yeah. these keys to the document and they're in the right relationship so i know how and when to use them and yeah. same thing if i've selected it for for issuance of json ld credentials or whatever then it'll make sure that it creates another key and puts it in the assertion method relationship and yeah. so it, it okay. can have many keys associated with it, but it's just like it's it's use case guided exactly what keys and how many keys are are created and used. Okay, total agree. And and just to clarify one thing, I was saying really badly was I was saying the controller would have a private key, and what the controller would say is, "Hey, Akapai, I want you to create a private key for or a key pair for me." It definitely shouldn't be the controller that's creating it. Right. So no, yeah, there, there just could to be, be very clear, could be used edge case where the controller has a seed, you know. But, exactly. You know, I was about to, to be, say it to could be, it could pass be in a seed, yeah. but but um, generally that would be not ideal because that's essentially the key. Yeah. Just a, okay. A, a detail I wanted to add uh, for me, did key is multi key, you know, like <laughs> uh, did key is a multi key with did key added in front of it. So when we say yeah. we want multi key, uh, in my vision is well might as well just use did key so that's also just a, a small caveat here yeah i i like <laughs> i ag i agree with you patrick that it's just a, a minor thing you're just sticking did colon key colon in front of it but i think keeping it as multi-key probably would be better as opposed to the confusion but you're right it's it's, it's a detail. So, did key just has has some quirks about it that i think aren't necessary for us to bring in as as like mental overhead because it's an unofficial draft that never really hasn't moved in in several years and it's got weird exceptions where if you have an ed255 19 key you also automatically need to convert it to the x255 19 key and put that in the key agreement there's just a few like special cases for did key that i, I think just aren't necessary for us to be able to uh, achieve our goal which is to, to just uniquely right. identify a key so for this PR, uh, from what I'm understanding, might want to close it and reopen a PR that just creates, just tackles the key instead of a did key, a way to create a key pair uh, and bind a verification method to it. Does that make sense? Yep. I, I, I think I would be good with that. Um, I, I think, Okay. yeah, I, I think if we split up those two things, creation of a so, key, just an arbitrary key, and then creation of, of did keys, actual did keys, I think those could be two separate things. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll uh, I feel like if we're going with just creating keys uh, in the wallet section, it's probably fine where the current did method is. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so it's going to be very similar to what's happening here. There's going to be two method, create, bind, uh, and I would really like to have like a delete one that I can have. Like we currently cannot delete keys in Akapai, right. which is yep. kind of yep. not, not dangerous, but dangerous in a way. Yeah. Um, and and we have to have update. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what the update could be. So I, I have the bind method, which is just to change the verification method that's associated with that key. That could be the update. Yeah. Uh, like we can okay. have other things um, like rotate, but yeah. The the one thing I'd also ask, we're we're running low on time, but but one thing I would ask is, I, I feel like we got to a a pretty close to a here's what the controller model looks like for did you know did management if you will and it's more as we said key management and and how to use keys um it'd be awesome if someone a could take write up some notes right after this about it and b um and one of the interesting things would be how would that change how we've got um did indie keys or or did soft keys uh or yeah. dids i mean dids i mean how I mean, does that how does the model fit for that one um, thing that i would like to see so currently when we provision an agent with a seed you know when you provide your auto provision at the common line you create a seed yeah. like the most traditional way you do it it creates a did sov yeah it would be great if we could associate the verification method to that yes. initial key so that yes. someone like what they did on candy uh, can also use that key pair as did web. You know, this yep. would be a great way. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll see uh, if I can okay. include that as a thing. Yeah. So just binding a key to a, a verification method. Yeah. So, so yeah. if we have this mental model of how the controller is going to work and how it's going to specify things, that should cover all did types. And that's what I'm saying. And so, um, you know, here's the here's what a controller might do to create a did web. Here's what they might do to create a a, a did indie. And here's what they might do to create a did solve a did web I a did. Yeah. One thing I want to stress is there's like two controller model we're talking about. There's the one where the the controller has a bit more to say about the did document, and the other one is the I could call it like the postman collection controller, where the controller just makes call to Akapai, doesn't need to host anything, doesn't need to host the docs. Yeah, uh, and does it? So I think, and that's actually no, that's is... the, that's the model. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's the model. But yes, well, let's let's see how we can bring those into alignment yeah. and make the controller's job as easy as possible. Because yeah. chances are, you know what what you just said there, Patrick. Oh, I'm going to pass a seed and a and a and a a did type in the command line because all I ever have is a single key. Yeah. Well, one, and I one might want to. I might want to update it so we will have that done. But that might be the way you manage things. One last the quick vast detail majority of them. Yeah. Is uh, how does this fare with multi-tenant? Is something I would uh, uh, put on maybe some future discussion uh, mm -hmm. if it's really tied together because one tenant cannot see the keys of the other tenant. So how will he know if there is already an existing like in a model where I could probably sort of manages the the did web uh, documents to a plugin. Uh, mm -hmm. How would it know if a uh, if a it did already exist, for example, or may, yeah. maybe Daniel has an idea. I don't. Know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I have to think about that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. Great discussion. Thank you. Um, join tomorrow. At open wallet if you can. Um, check out those documents. Uh, Thiago, did you check with Fernando? Um, and any uh, update just on chat. that? Yeah, just chat uh, minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we got a name. We got a name on our team. Uh, Perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write you on Discord. Excellent. I have a question about Akapai, actually, mm -hmm. about upgrades, actually. Uh, I saw that uh, there is a filter to to issue credentials, a filter called Anoncreds, and uh, with a comment uh, saying that uh, there are there are a lot of hard coded, uh, which selects if uh, the wallet is Asker or Asker Anoncreds. Uh, is there 
any work on that or is, it is on hold? Anyone knows about it? Um, let me get status updates. I believe the Asgar and OnCred's wallet type is operational and can be used. Um, Jamie, Ian, I don't know if you have updates on that and, and where we are with that. Yeah, the wallet type is usable. If you have an old wallet, you need to upgrade to have all yeah. your objects usable. Well, I mean, uh, I'm using Anocrats actually to issue credentials using another BDR we implemented here. Uh, okay. BDR using Bazel. And uh, we are using the Anocrats Asker. Uh, ask her wallet, but uh, one thing I noticed is that there is a filter called Anocrats. We are using right now the filter Indy. We just uh, made some small changes to to fit uh, the chain uh, to fit the code. But um, we noticed I uh, noticed that uh, there is a filter called Anocrats. Also, uh, it's it's gonna be. It's going to be used this one, or we're going to stick with the Indy one? I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to follow up on that one. Okay. I'll write a note. I'll add that to the topics and that'll be, um, let's discuss it on, you know, discord and, and issues, but worst case, it's back here for the, for the next meeting. Worst case. Right. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thanks all. See ya. See ya. Bye.